Hi, welcome back. In this video, we'll walk you through how to stream real-time data and do retargeting inside of Blender. Let's get started. First thing you want to do is go into our website, neuromocap.com. Under the supports, go to downloads. Locate the Blender Neuromocap Live plugin. And then we're going to go into our GitHub page here under this downloads page. As of this video, the latest plugin is version 1.0.2 beta. If you click on the assets, we can go ahead and download the plugin here. So we'll go ahead and do that. Once the download is complete, let's go into the folder and we're going to keep this folder as is. We don't need to unzip it. We'll jump into Blender. Inside of Blender here, we're going to add the plugin. Go into the Edit, Preferences. Under the Preferences, locate the add-ons. Here, we can install the plugin. Click on Install. Go to the Downloads folder where our plugin is currently located. Select the plugin and then click on Install Add-on. Once that's completed, we'll see that the plugin has been added to the top menu here. We'll go ahead and enable the plugin by clicking the little checkbox here. Go ahead and close this window. And the next thing we want to do is we have two different options to view our plugin. We can either go into the view and click on sidebar or use the shortcut keyboard letter N. So back in the viewport, let's hit N. We can see that the plugin has been installed correctly inside of Blender. So let's jump into Access Studio and we'll go ahead and open the sample project. We have the following sample files available for us here from Perception Studio to Perception 3 files. We'll select the run and jump sample file from Perception Studio. Make sure that we can scrub this animation and it's working properly. Go into the main menu to set up the BVH broadcasting. Go into settings. Under settings here, we want to enable the BVH broadcasting. You'll see that we have two different versions here to stream. We have captured from BVH, which you'll find in the capturing window. That's when you have a connected hardware. Or we can do BVH edit, which is what's being played back in the editing window. For this video, we're going to stream playback data. So let's toggle on the BVH edit option. In the skeleton options, we have the Access Studio skeleton by default selected. We have different options. We can select the Access Studio Thumb Open or the Access Legacy. These are compatible with the Blender plugin. For this example, we're going to use Access Studio Thumb Open, which is standard for all characters that are using a standard T-Pose. We'll leave Displacement enabled. We'll make sure the coordinate system is set up to new. The protocol, you can actually set up TCP or UDP. We'll go ahead and show you both versions. To begin with, we'll start with TCP. Click OK, then press Play and loop the data. Now real-time BVH data is ready. Inside of Blender, we need to start off with creating an armature. So we'll find our armature under the Add menu here. We'll go click on Add and select Access Studio Thumb Open, which is what we're using inside of Access Studio. So now let's navigate to the Neural Mocap Live plugin located in the sidebar. Here we have several options to select. We'll start by selecting the server. Since we're using Access Studio, we'll select Access Studio. Select the second option if you're using Axis Neuron or Axis Neuron Pro. In the protocol option, select TCP to match our current settings in Axis Studio. In the IP information, we'll leave the localhost 127.0.0.1. If you're using a static IP, make sure to update this. Next, we'll go ahead and update the port number. The port number, if we go back into Axis Studio, in the main menu, we'll see that it's currently at 7003. So we'll go back into Blender and we'll make sure that we update that correctly, 7003. Next, we want to select Direct. This is when we're doing real-time data stream directly to the armature. We'll also enable Live. We're going to populate the character name from Access Studio. So we'll go ahead and jump into Access Studio. And we'll see that under, these, under the sensor map, our current avatar is named CHR00. We'll then copy the character name, go back into Blender. We'll then paste the information under the character name then click on connect. Now our BVH data is streaming live to our armature. Now let's show you how to switch the data over from TCP to UDP. The first thing we're going to do is select UDP. And now that we select the UDP, we have different options. We're going to locate the IP address on the local address here. And we're going to pay attention to the destination address, port number 7004. So let's click on OK. And we're ready to start the setup for Blender. In Blender, we're going to disconnect the communication and we're going to reset a couple of options here. We're going to select for protocol UDP and we're going to update the port number to 7004. We're going to click on connect and now the data is transferring over through the UDP protocol. So now let's begin with the retargeting process. We need to import a character. For this video, we're going to be using a character from Ready Player Me website. We already have a character, so let's go ahead and import it. We're going to go to file, 
import, select .glb import. We're going to locate our file character here and click on import. One of the requirements is make sure that your character is in the T pose and you can see that our character is ready to go. So what we'll do now is select our character and the plugin options for the near mocap, we're going to switch the armature driver type from direct to retarget. Since our character is already in a T pose, we're going to mark this as a T pose. You may need to do adjustments if your character is in A pose. So let's click on mark T pose. Next, we're going to click on the source. We're going to select the real time data, which is currently being driven by the Perceptron Studio thumb open. So we'll click on that. Our Blender plugin uses an auto detect feature that will auto populate my human IK naming conventions to the source data. You can also manually assign the bones if needed and save a preset in your local folder. Our current character uses human IK skeleton conventions. Therefore, we'll just use the auto detect. Now we can go and click on the live button and we'll see that our character is now being driven by our real-time data. To record the data, navigate to our plugin and click on start record. Once you're done, click on stop record. Then you can delete the source data. And now your character has the animation data recorded. And that's it for this video. See you next time.